Hello everybody. Welcome to this first video on linear algebra. So this is a beautiful subject which we are going to start in this video. And before starting this subject, which uh, like effectively we'll start in the next video, we need certain you know basics which we are going to discuss in this video. So for this basics, I would like to tell you that suppose this is this is the community of everybody who is on this earth right so we know that we love to categorize for example we have a category called men women or we can have something like uh, say reptiles mammals and so many things other things and then we have something like kids infants and then we have grown ups why do we categorize? We categorize because a particular community, for example, women or say men, they have similar traits. You know, so not everything is similar, but they, they have some kind of similar traits. And, you know, that that is helpful if we are dealing with this particular category of people or this particular category of people. And similar thing happens in numbers also. Suppose... This is the largest set of numbers, say complex numbers. This is complex numbers, set of complex numbers. And inside these complex numbers, we see that they can be grouped. You know, for example, we have Z, set of all integers. We have R, set of all real numbers. We have Q, set of all rational numbers and so many things. Uh, and some smaller groups also. And we would like to you know make categories here also and the, 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 those categories will be helpful we will see later on so the point is i am going to tell you in this set of numbers and of course this is extendable i am just talking about numbers right now we have something called groups we have something called rings and we have something called fields these are three, you know, categories of numbers, uh, groups, uh, sets of numbers, right? So in this category, we have some sets which follow some similar traits. And similarly, in this category also, we have some sets. We call these sets as rings. And here also we have some sets. We call these sets as fields. And these things, generally these fields, they will be helpful in defining the vector spaces, which are the building blocks of linear algebra. So let me uh, summarize. So, building blocks of linear algebra are vector spaces. So let us write it down. Uh, building blocks of linear algebra, which is the subject which we are going to start, are vector spaces, which we do, I, I assume that we don't know right now. And for defining these ve vector spaces, for defining these vector spaces we need fields and this is what we are going to define in this video and before fields also i will define something called binary operation so we are in this direction of defining this field so this starts from here so something called binary operation so what is a binary operation? Suppose you have a set, set of numbers, or it can be set of functions also, set of polynomials also, it can be anything. So right now you have a set, which can be a set of fun numbers, functions, or any mathematical entity. Okay. So we say that you have, you have an oper operation, you call this set as A. So you, what you do, you make a copy of this set A, right? And you pick one element from here and one element from here. And you do something with these two elements and that something say cross. So you have A here and say B from here and you are crossing A and B. And if this A cross B again belongs to A, again belongs to A, to the set A, then we say that this cross is a binary operation right so the definition is mathematical definition is any function from a cross a to a is a binary 
operation so let us see the examples so you can have say you have a set of real numbers right set of real numbers and you define from r cross r to r an operation where you take x and y from r and then you define the subtraction so you have x minus y now you know that if you subtract two real numbers you are going to get for sure a real number since subtraction of two real numbers two real numbers is going to give us a real number so we know that this subtraction is a binary operation from r on r okay now let us see this is not a binary operation so you can note this thing subtraction is not a binary operation on z how no, not on z on n set of natural numbers right so because we know that if you take two natural numbers say 4 and 5 and you subtract these two natural numbers you will get minus 1 which is not a natural number so subtraction is not a binary operation on set of natural numbers okay so this was what is a binary operation now let us define what is a field before that actually we should go from group to ring and then field but because we are going to this you know i want to be specific uh, whatever is required in linear algebra so that is why i am not going into those things that what is the group and we can have that uh, thing separately so what is a field field is a set f you have a set f then you have two binary operations this can be anything this is just a notation i i denote these two binary operation with addition and multiplication so these are two binary operations so a field is always a set with the two binary operations satisfying certain properties So let us look at what are those properties. So the first properties, of course, I have already called these as binary operations, but let me write it down that if I take any two elements from the set F, then these two operations will lead to the same uh, element from the same set for all A, B belongs to F. This is nothing but this is same as saying plus and dot are binary operations. This, all, this is what we have already said, right? So this is the first thing which is required. Then the second thing is associativity for the plus. A plus B plus C should be same as A plus B plus C. So this is called associativity for addition. And then you have identity for addition. There must exist an element say e in f such that a plus e should be equal to a equal to e plus a for all a in f means that there must be an element in your set you know which will not affect the element if we add that element to all the elements of f the fourth property is this is called existence of identity then fourth properties for each a in f there must exist a b in f such that a plus b is equal to e is equal to b plus a so this is called existence of inverse and then the fifth property is a plus b should be same as b plus a this is called commutativity 
with respect to addition right then the sixth property is you now now we are done with addition we have to come to this multiplication and i want to make a point that this is not the addition it can be any operation we are just calling it as an addition so the uh, properties for multiplication they are associativity again a plus dot b dot c should be same as a dot b dot c so this is associativity for dot then you should have identity for dot so there must exist there must exist an element say now let let us call it as e1 such that a dot e1 is equal to a is equal to e1 dot a for all a in f and then this is called identity existence of identity for dot existence of identity for dot then the next is for each a in f there must exist a b in f it will be b1 say such that a dot b1 is equal to e1 is equal to b1 dot a for all this we have already written for all a in okay this is called existence of inverse for multiplication of course and then we have commutativity for multiplication that is a dot b is equal to b dot a this is called commutativity and the last one is a property combining these two operations so we should have dot should be distributive over addition so a dot b plus c should be a dot b plus a dot c and a plus b dot c should be a dot c plus b dot c so these are the 10 properties you see if these 10 properties are satisfied this is the first one second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth and these 10 properties are satisfied we say that this set together with these two operations is a field right so whatever we required in the vector spaces definition is we should know that this r over this normal addition which we know and this normal multiplication is a field and c complex numbers with addition and multiplication is a field so uh, is a field let us see how this r let us see r plus dot so we know that first of all these two be, should be binary operations we know that addition of two real numbers is a real number and multiplication of two real numbers is a real number so the first property that plus and dot are binary operations this is okay and then we know that if we take any two real number three real numbers then addition is associative which this is already we know and also we know that for each real number if we add zero we will get that real number again so this is the existence of identity and we know that for each real number there exists a real number which is minus x which makes it zero so this there exists the uh, inverse and also we know that addition is commutative right and now if we come to the product side so we know that um, product uh, multiplication is also associative with associative right and then also we know that if we multiply each number real number with one which is also a real number we will get that number again so this is the existence of the identity and then we have for each real number x there is a real number one by x which makes it one multiplication wise so this is the existence of inverse also we know that the multiplication of real numbers is commutative also we know that multiplication is associative over addition right and you can write it this way also so these all these are the properties which we are familiar with and this makes r a field which we are going to use and similarly you can check for complex numbers also this is normal addition and normal multiplication of complex numbers right so this is also a field and this is also a field so this is what is uh, useful for us when we define the vector spaces thank you